Hey everyone, so looking at the past week with the CRISPR sector getting absolutely crushed, today we're going to be looking at a weekly summary of the sector, going over stock price changes, the market caps, insider transactions, news from the past week, and at the end I'll be talking about why the stocks fell so much this week and what I am personally doing. So let's start off though and take a look at the performance in the past week. CRSP was down the lowest, just around 7.8%, down to $61 a share. Edit was down around 10% to $18 a share. CRBU was down around 13% to $8 a share. Beam was down around 15% to around $52 a share. Verve down around 17% to around $20 a share. NTLA down around 17% to $63 a share. And finally, GRPH down once again 20% to $4.14 per share. And just really quick, if you're new here to CRISPR Investors, definitely consider nailing the subscribe button below. And also definitely check out the Patreon link below where you can access the new CRISPR Investors Discord. You can join the free channel with the link below just to chat. But for the exclusive server, I have spent a huge amount of time on it recently, carefully curating and automating to deliver a huge amount of automated news in the sector. And so beyond updates every day on my personal CRISPR portfolio, you can see from the list below all the things included in the Discord with insider transactions, alerts, private CRISPR company news, ARK Invest updates, CRISPR journal articles, podcast patents, and so much more. Some of the integration tools I use beyond the code I have written personally does cost me money. So there is a very small cost of $4 a month, but I do believe it provides much more equivalent value in return. And take note that the more people who join the server, the more I will be able to pay to expand it and deliver even more alerts. Now with all that said, let's jump into today's video. Current market caps for the CRISPR companies are as follows. GRPH is at the bottom at 240.2 million. And then we have CRBU just under 500 million. Next up we have Verve at around 950 million. Edit standing at around 1.3 billion. And then we have Beam at 3.6 billion. Next up is Intellia at 4.7 billion. And finally we have CRSP at 4.72 billion. As far as insider transactions in the past week, we actually didn't have anything too significant. I believe with Graphite Bio, we had a few executives who were granted stock options. Now, going over to main news from the past week, earlier on Monday, we heard from Verve Therapeutics with reporting some preclinical data from their ANG PTL3 program. The data goes beyond just being impressive in that they showed durability, which was out to 20 plus months in non-human primates for treating ASCVD. And if you recall at the front, they've got their leading Verve 101 therapy that targets the PCSK9 gene, which they are advancing quite rapidly and looking to cement IND later this year. And then they're working on their second program, not yet to be nominated, which focuses on this inactivation of the ANG PTL3 gene. Previous preclinical data has shown that sequential dosing of base editors targeting these two pathways has produced powerful results. So the data they reported on Monday comes with a preface that they are planning on developing a therapy focusing on patients already on a PCSK9 inhibiting treatment to target the ANG PTL3 gene, and then also on patients with the genetic disease of homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. And the preclinical data reported showed a 96% reduction in ANG PTL3 protein levels in a sample size of four non-human primates after follow-up to 616 days. And also with that, they reported no safety issues. So the three key things to take away from this are that the therapy is number one, durable, number two, effective, and number three, safe. So moving forwards, it looks at this point that they are working on nominating the ANG PTL3 program very soon. Next up to talk about is Aditas Medicine, which reported more encouraging data from its cell therapy focuses on their iPSC-derived induced natural killer cells, which is treating solid tumors. Obviously, extension to humans can be very different, but this data is very impressive nonetheless. Recall that this therapy uses their sleek technology to knock in CD16 in membrane-bound IL-15, designed to help the natural killer cells' durability in fighting the cancer. So basically, a summary of the data concludes that their edited natural killer cells, paired with trastuzumab, which is a chemotherapy, show greater benefit compared to wild-type natural killer cells. And this is in vitro. But then also in vivo, their edited cells showed impressive results in mice, clearing six out of eight treated mice completely of their tumors. And survival rates showed this as well, with 100% of the mice surviving 144 days out compared to less than half of the control. And they also measured durability of the edited cells, 
which was actually still significant after 144 days. So this data is going to be presented, and well, if you're watching this, will have already been presented at the AACR conference with a poster presentation actually having already been released, which you're actually seeing snippets of here in this video. But to sum it up, this catapults from their edit to a two program, which is focusing on the cell therapy. So a lot of positive data to back it up. Finally, let's talk about Caribou Bio, which in a similar fashion reported an initial look at data prior to their official presentation on Sunday at the AACR conference. Now, this particular presentation is focusing on CB011, the company's anti-BCMA CAR T-cell therapy, which uses Cas12A Chardonnays to target relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. The data shows effectiveness at the edited CAR T-cells to both kill cancer cells while avoiding immune rejection from T-cells and natural killer cells. This being a focus on the investing side, I don't want to get too deep into the science, but it is important nonetheless to talk about fundamentals. So an overview of how this therapy works is that they use their Chardonnay technology to insert a proprietary humanized anti-BCMA chimeric antigen receptor, hence CAR, into the TRAC gene of the edited cell. Now this is done to actually make the cell be able to fight cancer, but the more important part is what they are doing to increase durability and make the cell avoid rejection and keep fighting the cancer longer. And actually, which is the main proprietary component that Caribou has to offer, or at least they say they offer, is this insertion of a gene that encodes a B2MHLAE peptide fusion into the B2M gene of the T cell. And this, to summarize, allows for disguising the cells from the patient's immune system. So getting to the data they are presenting, they showed that their edited cells resulted in a 40% rate of survival after 80 days compared to the control sample of none of the benchmark anti-BCMA therapy. Overall, I am encouraged about this program, but there's a lot riding on their front-runner therapy, CB010, which is currently in trials. All right, so that covers the main news from the past week, but I do want to talk about the huge decline in market value in the CRISPR companies during the past week. And it's so easy to sit back and just say, hold, 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 hold. And oftentimes this can be the wrong approach to investing, especially when you're holding or owning broken companies. But the reason why I have not sold and I am not the least bit concerned is that there's been no recent news to change my reasoning for owning these companies from when I first bought. The reason why we saw such a massive decline in value is because there's a transition right now away from high-risk investments, which these CRISPR companies are, they are actually among the highest, honestly, and a focus towards lower risk positions with a huge amount of concern about economic trends with inflation being high and interest rates low and a potential clamping that could occur as rates are increased. Who knows what's going to happen, but over time one constant has remained true. Investing is hard, but good companies will ultimately prevail beyond macroeconomic trends in the stock will follow as long as they are positioned in industries that are going to continue to grow despite said changes in economic trends which I believe biotech and CRISPR gene editing will not be affected. So for the CRISPR companies with strong cash positions close to potential FDA approval or other recurring revenue streams you're going to be looking at lower long-term risk. So CRISPR therapeutics and Telia therapeutics being the front runners there and Beam therapeutics also in there because of their licensing capabilities to generate revenue and then hey maybe Edit gets an honorable mention as well well. But that's where I stand at the moment. And of course, let me know below in the comments where your head is at and how you're dealing with the latest volatility. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely consider subscribing and be sure to check out the Discord and Patreon link below. And with that said, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.